Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So, you know, for quite a while we had been talking about the election day asteroid that was going to buzz the Earth. Well, turns out we had a bright fireball meteor confirmed over central Alabama. And nobody's hurt that we know of. No, nobody's hurt. Actually, it's more than just even central Alabama. If you look at the map, you see people all over Alabama, even into Mississippi, up into Tennessee, over by Atlanta. A ton of people saw it as well. Even going into the upstate of South Carolina, all the way over to Charlotte and Roanoke. Boy, it sure made itself known. It sure did, you know. So this was, uh, according to the American Meteor Society, it was seen burning up in Earth's atmosphere near Birmingham, Montgomery, Huntsville, Auburn, and Troy, just to name a few of the Alabama cities. The most concentrated area reports came from around Atlanta, Georgia. That's likely due just to the simple fact that there's more people in Atlanta than these other cities. And there's video here. You can see it going flying by. We've had an awful lot of these uh, fireballs. It's been really ridiculously busy. It has. So the actual path of the bright meteor was just east of Birmingham. Starting point of its path was roughly the meeting point of Calhoun, Cherokee, and, and Etowah counties east of Gadsden. It traveled southwest and ended its path at the intersection of U.S. 431 and Alabama 144 near Alexandria, Ohatchee, and Wellington. Oh, wow. That's That covered a lot of area, a lot. It did. So, you know, looking at the geometric impact point uh, of the fireball, somewhere between downtown Talladega and I-20 in northern Talladega County, that's essentially where the meteor would have struck the Earth's surface if it survived burning up in the lower atmosphere. So while not likely it's possible small pieces or fragments referred to as meteorites made it to the surface, and that's very rare, and they can't be worth a significant amount of money. So maybe people are going to go out there hunting meteorite gold. Well, if I was there, I would. (laughs) Yeah, pretty interesting. You know, just uh, the timing of all this, as we had just been talking about the Election Day uh, fireball meteor, asteroid that was coming by you know it was, we don't it was supposed to actually just like really get close and skim mm-hmm. so here you see a camera in hampshire detected a fireball going through the moonlit clouds look at that it almost is that almost look like a string of pearls type of little booms going on it's so pretty very interesting. And then we get this report at uh, space.com that a fireball that made it to the ground, crashed in Michigan, holds extraterrestrial organic compounds. No, that's exciting. That's exciting stuff. So it just seems like more and more they're dripping out disclosure information. Um, and they keep doing this. Like you could find something every day on disclosure if you were to look. Oh, there's tons. There's tons. And and what's confusing things, too, is just the amount of stuff that's up in the sky nowadays. We have all the satellites that are going up in the sky. And then, of course, we have Space Force, um, the secret space program, which has been going on for so long. And you got to wonder, you know, all the drones in the sky, all, it's, it's, it's all, um, well, it's busy up there. It's really busy up there. And then we get this, and this this reminds me of um, some sci-fi movies that you know might have grown up with in the '60s and '70s, where like a meteorite will crash, and then there's something in it like the blob, right? You re- you guys remember the blob and all? Well, how about just the thought that what if there is organic compounds that are not from Earth that come in? And all of a sudden, you know, something interacts. I mean, what if there's, you know, viruses and bacteria in there? And, you know, does that happen on a regular basis? Is, is that how some mysterious diseases have come in the past? Or even things that maybe will trigger different changes in the evolutionary path of what's on the planet even? Yeah, that's what I was thinking is things might trigger evolution. Yeah, well, it's really fascinating. So, yeah, definitely organic extraterrestrial compounds that landed in Michigan with this meteor. Now, this 
uh, video is is curious, and and it kind of reminded me of the one that we saw in New Jersey that everybody said was a blimp after it. But this looks a little different. This is in England. This couple's driving, and you see this light now, cigar shape, and I, I'm thinking it looks more cigar shape. Um, a lot of times that's not necessarily a good craft. Like this tweet is is hoping it's a Pleiadian light ship. Um, and you could see as you get closer, you know, I don't know. Cigar shape, a lot of times that's associated with the DRACO. Yeah, it could it could very well be. Well, what's your vibe? It, it, it was it strange. I didn't, <coughs> I... It was like scrambled information I got. I want to believe that it's a good ship, but deep inside, I feel maybe it's not. Yeah, well, you know, of course, we've talked about it um, so often that the military and the militaries of the world, uh, of course, we've, you know, have all these stories and legends of Eisenhower meeting with some greys, Hitler meeting with some Nordic ones that were under uh, DRACO control, reptilian control. Interesting, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of things coming out here. And we we might be seeing a lot of stuff that's really, if it's, it could be our own. You know, a lot of it could be our own that hasn't been released. And here it looks distorted into almost a square. So, um, and there it's more like your classic pill shape right tic tac shape I mean, we had the navy coming out talking about the tic tac ufos as well interesting stuff i mean we, we it could be military it could be military that has utilized uh the technology of groups that they're in contact with and working with but this also did look a little bit more like it might be non-physical yeah, you know, when I was trying to read it and go in and look at the information, it was it was cloaked. So whenever they cloak it like that, it tells me that it might not be something good. I'll have the links for you guys, too. Um, and this is off of Twitter, but it, it does uh, go to uh, a YouTube channel. So I'll give you guys the links and let you see what you think about that. And so then we have a mysterious drone that was photographed over California. And here they're trying to figure out exactly what it is. And it's it was up there pretty high. They figure it had to be up there at least 25,000 feet. And again, we're going to be seeing all sorts of stuff now. We are going to be seeing tons of stuff. Possible photo of the highly secret RQ-180 aircraft surfaces online. And it was taken in daylight, as you could tell. And this unknown aircraft was flying above California City in a racetrack pattern. Uh, Interesting. It's not so secret now. No, I know. And so, you know, they say it, it's 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 not like uh, a typical stealth bomber. It doesn't have uh, the sawtooth wings to it, although it does kind of have that that V front shape. It has a bow shape to it, yeah. Yeah, the bow shape to it. And again, um, these RQ-180 drones may be as large as 130 feet. The estimates of the wingspan of the polecat suggest it's about 90 feet. So they're trying to figure out what is this particular drone. Now, you know, before when we were by uh, Area 51 up in Nevada, we, we saw a lot of strange stuff all the time. It was just, you know, par for the course. You felt it. You saw it. Everything. Yep. Yeah, and we and we would see military helicopters all of a sudden appearing at the side of the road. I mean, we we've had them buzz us just like thirty feet away from us. That was freaky. Yep, it was. But we're going to be seeing a lot of different stuff. So this goes in and it talks about Area Fifty One in Nevada as well. Um, there's been a lot of photos snapped off of Google Earth, you know, that show that that particular complex has been expanding rapidly lately. And so here they believe that the RQ-180, which is a secret uh, drone, very highly advanced, could be uh, stationed there. So, yeah, there's bases in California, too. So maybe it was doing a flight going from one base to the other as well. Yep, it could be. And, of course, with everything going on uh, military-wise, 
with all the tensions as well, there's been a lot of a lot of military exercises. Like as we speak right now, there's a joint military exercise going on uh, off the coast of India between the United States, Japan, Australia. Um, you have to send that message to China about expansionism. And of course, then we have today's the big day, as everybody knows. It's that uh, election day. The other thing we're getting is a lot of scientific studies coming out talking about habitable planets and things. And this is a study, and this was first um, published in Smithsonian, uh, but this is the actual study paper right here. And it gets into the Kepler uh, mission, and you know, it's, it's again, it's a slow trickle because they're talking about rocky Earth-like planets and habitable zones. And they're common. They're very common, just strangely enough. Yep. Yeah. So this is another um, another study that's coming out, and it's all about the occurrence of rocky habitable zone planets around solar-like stars, you know, ones that are very similar to ours, from Kepler data. And uh, you know, conclusion is again, uh, we are nothing absolutely unique. You know, we are probably fairly typical. Um, as we know, our, our star is fairly typical. You know, there are some stars that you could fit hundreds of thousands of our stars inside of. But then again, that doesn't necessarily mean that those gigantic stars are more habitable. Often it's actually the, the red dwarf, uh, the red giants that uh, have a lot of planets in the habitable zones. But it's just, again, it's more of this trickling out of the information that allows us to put two and two together and, uh, you know, we're not alone. No, definitely not. And some people's, um, their bubbles are going to get burst, I think. Well, yeah, and I do think it's likely that we'll have complete admission, you know, in many people's lifetime, uh, as, as, as well as the really good possibility of, you know, being introduced to perhaps, you know, some sort of extraterrestrial being out there maybe on the White House lawn. I feel something like that's going to happen in our lifetime for sure. It does feel like it. So guys, I want to thank you for your support on uh, Patreon as well as Ko-Fi because we definitely couldn't do it without it, without you guys. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.